Oh, hoi there, traders. How are we doing? Hello, Karen. Thank you for popping a, a yoo-hoo in the chat box. Let's get a rockin' and a roll. So. Quickly kick the cat out of the office and we'll get started. <laughs> right. Hello, Randall. Hello, hello, hello. We've got... Uh, Want to see people still just popping in for the moment? See everyone logging in. Hello, Adrian, Alan, Bal, Glenn, James. Hello, uh, Karen, of course, Randall. Uh, Scott, Vito, YB, Sul Suljaman. I think I'm pronouncing that right. If I've not, I've completely embarrassed myself, but I had a go nonetheless. Right, let's do it. Ooh, I was close. I was close, but no cigar. <laughs> well, close enough is not good enough when it comes to name pronunciation, is it really? But <laughs> right, so stuck selecting stocks is the general theme for today's session. So if you're stuck, then we're going to get you unstuck is the idea. So that's my objective by the end of the session so that you can go away and apply what we've learned and go and find, filter and sort your own stocks and come back and tell me that you found some amazing stocks to trade. So uh, typical agenda is just that. We're going to go and look at some stocks, going to spend most of today's session looking at the charts, look at the market overview, we're going to look for some swing trading setups. And if you're stuck selecting stocks, then we're going to aim to get you unstuck. Uh, the way to get the most amount of value today is to interact, ask questions, comment, like, share, um, yeah, and generally just get involved. I will stop and start when appropriate if there is a relevant question. I've got my uh, chat window up on the other monitor. So if you've got a question, feel free to pop it in the comment box. Uh, and again, if you've got a question, just raise your hand. If you want to have a chat, uh, I can turn the mic on and we can talk and we can chew the fats over the markets. So if, if you are new and you don't know who this little fella is with the squeaky voice, my name's Phil Newton. I'm just a regular guy. Um, I have been helping traders uh, become better traders, more profitable traders for about 26, 27 years now. I've been trading myself for 28 years full time and um, helping you get profitable results. Um, the process that I generally call what I do is production line trading. I want this for me first. I want a systematic approach to find, filter and sort stocks because it keeps me sane. Um, I was a very emotional trader. I did everything that you've probably experienced as well. I uh, bought highs, sold lows, um, bought red bars, green bar, you know, bought green, bought red bars, sold green bars, you know, just literally up flip flopping around. Um, I've had sleepless nights. My first trade um, was more, it lasted for eight months. It was in a company called Waterfall. Uh, I'll never forget it. It's, you always remember your first, don't you? Uh, I bought the share for uh, 54 bright, shiny pennies. And then just didn't sleep for eight months. It was, you know, it was literally fully leveraged, if you like. You know, all my worldly possessions were in this one stock. So I've run the gauntlet of weird shit, emotions. Uh, I've experienced it. And what I've spent, certainly the, the very early part of the years, and maybe it explains some of how I approach trading, is if I had that experience or an experience. It was either how can I do it again uh, or how can I not do that again or how can I not have that experience? And that approach, kind of the, the after action approach of uh, the, the trade, okay, that was great. Let's do it again. You know, or that was not great. So let's, how do we avoid doing it again? You know, and that's what creates a set of rules. We've sometimes referred to this as the personality of a trader. Uh, and then when we fast forward 28 years, it, it Frankensteins into a systematic approach to fine filter and sort stocks that I refer to as a production line. 
Uh, the good news is, is all my trials and tribulations and um, many uh, occasions rocking gently in the corner means that it's replicatable. I'm going to be your personal swing trading mentor, just like I've helped, you know, many, many people over the years with uh, helping them get their own results. The idea behind what I do is not just some fancy name. It's a replicatable process that helps you get results. Um, so my name's Phil Newton. I like a good read, a ramble. Uh, I talk shit from time to time. Um, I like flamingos in a... Cr I don't know why I do. Most importantly, I'm not a Wall Street guru. Um, I have run my own hedge funds uh, despite that, but I've not had the traditional route to uh, the stock market. I am just a regular guy who found success and I want to help you get your successes. Uh, as I keep saying, it is repeatable. It's simple to replicate and get results. It's not just me saying that. It's my past students that say that. It's easy to follow and profitable. Um, and again, it's a regular theme throughout the people that I've helped over the years. And if you want the official um, summary, you know, you can press pause on the replay and just catch this at your own leisure. Uh, I do have uh, official programs, so uh, just a quick commercial intent warning. Uh, you may be invited to work with me. Um, I'm not shy about admitting it. Um, I give a lot of what I do away for free on these sessions. I give a lot of my time uh, to serious traders to help them become better traders or even just profitable traders. Um, but if you want to work in a more official capacity with me, I have a group accelerator. I also offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I don't have any uh, vacancies for at the moment, as you can appreciate it's time intensive. I'm working with two wonderful people at the moment, and I'm giving all my attention to them. If you'd like to know about the waiting list, send me a message. And the process that we teach, or I teach, is the royal way, it's just me in the background, is uh, production line trading. And this essentially helps me find, filter and sort. Sorry, the step one is mechanical scan. This helps me find, filter and sort. And we're going to go through this in a lot more detail later, as well as step number two. This is the, 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 the two key elements that help me uh, not be flicking through chart after chart after chart. Most people don't do this. They don't have a scan that puts three or four things in front of them. I'm only looking for three or four things. Most people tend to do the visual inspection when that means that you're flicking through chart after chart after chart after chart after chart, and then three, four, five hours has disappeared in the day. It's three o'clock in the morning, and he's still none the wiser over what to trade. So we just want to be able to zero in on the best opportunities. So one of the, the ways that we approach this is with a mechanical scan. Uh, I do this on a small universe of stocks. Like right now, I mean, my universe of stocks is less than 100 stocks. I'm only looking at what I believe to be the best candidates for swing trading. And I can then take that universe and just find, you know, just quite literally pluck out the two, the three, the four best stocks for today or this week with a mechanical scan. I'm still not really, it's not really necessary to flip through every chart all the time. And even if you were to flip through two or three times a week, which I still do, it shouldn't take you more than a few minutes, which we'll see later when we do the visual confirmation, when we're looking for, okay, what are we actually looking for? We need to know what the end result is in mind. Again, very simply, we can look for buy the dip. So we want to find a trending stock that we can buy the dip in. And that's one of the visual confirmations. So just because we're scanning for a trend over here in the mechanical step, we want to visually confirm that actually we do see a trend. And if we don't, then we can go and do something else. And it's only then when we've validated what we're doing that we then move on to the, the trade craft, the entries, the exits, the stops, the targets, the where am I getting in? How am I going to manage the trade if it's not working as expected? And again, we have a full process that allows us to manage the trade just exactly the same way as when I manage my hedge funds. You know, it, it's a, a process that means that I don't have to worry about whatever is going on in the world. We've got earnings season at the moment. I've not looked at it. I don't care. Uh, I didn't consider it when I back tested through, you know, multiple decades of data to validate the strategy. So why should I pay attention to it? But, you know, we can uh, basically just follow the process and make money. And that's what I'm going to try and um show you today in part so that you're not stuck selecting stocks.
So with that said, are you stuck not knowing what to look for when selecting stocks? If you've got a question about that, then just pop it in the chat box, raise your hand. And if you want to turn the mic on, I can do. If you just want to leave a comment, then, uh, then let's do it. Um, and with that said, let's go full nerd. Let's go full nerd. So when we're thinking about scanning for stocks, again, just come back to, I mean, a lot of the time I'm just looking at, again, these are the best stocks or what I consider to be the best stocks. Now, <clears throat> how do you create a universe? Uh, let's do uh, uh, X, Y. Let me just turn the charts intentionally blank, folks, just so I can use it as a, a scribble screen, a whiteboard, a gray board, if you like. How do we create a universe of stocks? Again, we said in the past, there's 28,000 or plus stocks in the known universe when it comes to the US markets, let alone the global markets, because I appreciate people in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, um, Europe, um, you know, all over the world, there are multiple exchanges, but just the US, there's a big world of stocks. A lot of them are shite. We don't need to pay great deal attention to the majority of stocks. And despite popular uh, belief or misconception, uh, penny stocks is not the answer. Pink sheets is not the answer. Um, we want to trade liquid stocks. We want to trade stocks that have a market. And to be fair, CMG, Chipotle Mexican Grill, um, it is an, a known brand. It's a high dollar stock, but that doesn't really meet the criteria for a liquid tradable stock. So you may have good viewpoints on that stock. Again, it, it, it's well known whether you uh, know the product or you've used their product or services or not, but you are familiar with it is the point. So just because you've got familiarity with something, it doesn't mean that it's tradable. What we want is we want the stocks that have liquidity. So one of the things that we can do to create a universe of stocks is have a um, again, we're trying to make that number smaller. Uh, uh, pressing all the wrong buttons here, bear with me, bear with me. We want to make that number of stocks smaller. So one of the things that we do is volume. So we want to make sure that we've got at least a million shares. And this is the, the, the simplest thing that you can do is to bring that number down to something sensible is start with at least a million. And if you just look for stocks that have at least a million shares traded, then you're going to end up with about 2,000 stocks. Still a big number, but at least you're looking at the best, the cream of the crop. Again, like I was starting to illustrate with Chipotle uh, Mexican Grill, um, they've got low volume. They've got options, but they're not traded. The bid-ask spread, the difference between the buy and the sell price is measured in dollars. Whereas what we want is the difference between the buy and the sell price, the bid and the ask. We want it to be tiny and um, as small as possible. For example, Apple, the market on Apple is a penny wide. It doesn't get any smaller. So we want to make sure that we've got that as a default. And again, one of the easiest ways to do that before you start adding in other, other things, other flavors, um, you know, you can quite literally just say, okay, a million. Well, let's change it to two. Let's put five million as a minimum. And that number is going to come down, but also the quality is going to go up. The quality of the stocks, the cost of business, um, you know, it, it suddenly becomes a lot better. Uh, and again, we, we've commented in the past before on previous workshops where you hear stories about people getting in, in trades, in positions, and when something weird happens, when the market moves fast, because there's a thin market, that disappears. There's no market when weird stuff happens. Or if you get out, you know, it's going to cost you many, many dollars because the bid ass spread, assuming that you can close the position, is going to mean that you're going to lose more money because people panic when they're losing money. Anyway, or the market goes weird. So one of the things that we can do to avoid this and make sure that we get a good price on good stocks at any time that we want is to look at the volume. Now, when you do that, you can also have the option volume. I'm just going to do OV. Option volume will most of the time also be good. Now, the reason why I mentioned option volume is because I want to put my trades on with, with, uh, with options, stock options. I use it as, uh, primarily as an alternative to trading stock. 
So I can use that um, high volume on the share price or on the of shares rather um, as a proxy to say, well, there's probably going to be good option volume. So if it's got options and it's got several million shares traded, it's probably got a liquid option market. Now I could also filter for say a thousand um, option contracts on average traded. Um, I could also do that as a minimum criteria. And then that's going to weed out a lot of the, the low um, option volume uh, stocks as well. Because uh, a few are still, they're still going to slip through the nets, still going to slip through the nets, just the, the nature of the way that we do it. So you can add that in. I find that option filter a little bit of an overkill. Um, it just filters out some good stocks that just don't have a huge option market. Uh, so nonetheless, this creates that universe. Again, when we do this, you're going to have, again, keep bringing that number down. You're going to have about 7K, uh, sorry, um, 700, not 7K. So you're going to bring that number from two down to seven. We want to bring seven down to, again, easiest thing to do. If you start saying 10 million shares traded, then you're going to end up with about 150 stocks just with the volume before you look at anything else without looking at fundamentals, without looking at, is it a good swing trade without looking at the charts, you've just got a core list of stocks that are good traders. So before you get into strategy and what we're trying to accomplish, you end up with a good universe of stocks. So let me just pause there. Does this help with the, what shall I trade? Let's create a universe of good candidates first. And this is what I do. This is what I do. Before I do anything else, I want to make sure I've got the best stocks that give me the best opportunities. And that is liquidity. Is there a marketplace? Um, a good example in the real world um, is when you go to auction, you take your nice piece of uh, family art heirlooms that you've had in the attic, you take it to a local uh, auction house. There's not many people there. Um, you know, there's bric-a-brac. It's not really great, but you've got this wonderful piece of art. It Maybe it's a Van Gogh. I don't know. But the point is, is you take it to a local place that doesn't specialize in artwork, then you're just going to get, you know, Johnny come lately is taking that you're not going to get a good price. There's little marketplace. So if you've got a piece of artwork that you might think is viable, you're going to take it to a specialist. You're going to take it to a dealer, a marketplace, an auction house in a bigger city that maybe specializes in art. Um, maybe, maybe you don't go to Sotheby's, but maybe you do. I don't know. You want to go to the best. And again, this is a, a real world example of marketplaces. Again, if you want to make sure that you can get the product that you want, at a price that's affordable, maybe you go to Walmart. You know, they sell literally everything at bottom prices. Okay, quality may not be there, but you can get pretty much anything at a reasonable price at any time of day because they've got a, a liquid marketplace. So these are just all real world examples, real world examples. Uh, Randall's just picking up on the comments. Yeah, did that for a living. It's ve the venue is everything. So it's just looking for the marketplace. So this is how we can do it. We've got a marketplace, but then each stock has its own market. So that's what we're trying to find, like which stocks are tradable. Can I get in at a sensible price? More importantly, if this goes tits up, can I get out at a sensible price whenever I want, when weird stuff happens? Well, again, I think we all get the point now. So this creates that universe. And then from that, I, that you, let's say that we end up with 150 stocks. Then I can start to research them. And this is the <clears throat> this is the bit that most traders probably won't do, is I can then do uh, either a manual inspection or an automated inspection of how I intend to trade. Then I've got a list of stocks, 150 candidates that might be suitable for a strategy. And again, it doesn't matter at this point whether it's a swing trading strategy. We can find stocks that are great candidates for swing trading, which is what I prefer to do. We can also look for stocks that may be good for cash flowing. Maybe in that universe, we can add in or as part of our filter, we can say and have dividends and have good fundamentals. Because maybe what I want to do is I want to cash flow uh, the stock, I want a good stock, a steady company that has good dividends. I can buy the stock and sell option premium against it. So create cash flow uh, on a, a weekly and monthly basis. That's usually called uh, income trading or cash flowing stocks, covered call strategy, essentially. 
Um, but, you know, we can start to dip into that universe and maybe with dividends and reasonable fundamentals, uh, if you want to go into that, maybe you end up with 10 stocks that have great dividends, good prospects. They're making back to back profits, um, you know, quarter on quarter, uh, all the usual things that you might look for. Uh, shareholder dividend, you know, shareholders, um, sorry, the uh, the company directors are buying share, you know, whatever the, the, the fundamentals reason are. Again, I'm just trying to think of a, a basic checklist that just gives you confidence to go, yeah, these are the, these are a good 10 stocks that maybe is worth cash flowing and adopting a cash flow strategy. Maybe you want to look for utilities. Maybe you want stocks that are that don't typically move so that you can sell premium and intentionally look for stocks that don't move rather than do move. Again, as a swing trader, I'm looking for movements. As an income trader, a cash flow trader, maybe you want utility type, type stocks like um, AT&T. And they're not growth. Stock is the point. There's going to be little swings, but that might make it a great candidate for uh, buying the shares, selling premium, or just straight up selling premium and collecting an income against the stock that doesn't historically move on a regular basis. So now it's the we've got that 150 stock list. We can start saying, what do I want from my trading? Again, as we've already outlined, my primary strategy is swing trading. So what I'm then looking for out of that those 150 stocks. I'm then looking for stocks that have a tendency to move, to ebb and flow back and forth. Now, if you're doing this manually, as opposed to having a, a nice little automation and an algorithm, uh, because I've got both. Well, let's just show you both. So from my point of view, and again, I've got to admit, this is only a recent thing. Uh, just because I'm not a programmer, I don't code stuff on a regular basis. I'm smart enough to devise strategies. I'm just not smart enough to convert them to mathematics. And um, so I, it took me a long, long time to find uh, someone that was good enough to code these things. So what I'm doing here is at the click of a few buttons, I've had the strategy that I teach you every week um, systematized. It's about 80% automated. The only thing that's not factored in here is the money management process, the hedging strategy and tactics. This equity curve would actually be a lot steeper if I could get that coded in. Again, I'm just figuring out how to describe it to the program. That's the reason why it's not uh, in there. But despite the money management elements, uh, you know, uh, out on a stop loss, out at a target. So the classic sort of um, uh, exit on stop loss or targets is it's um, uh, looks at stock. I can see I've got a steady equity curve. It, it is a good candidate for swing trading. Uh, and I can, at the click, again, at the click of a button, just go down the list of stocks and say, is this over the last uh, 20 years, which is what we've got loaded up on uh, this particular stock, Apple, um, is this a good candidate for swing trading? And all I'm looking for is, does it have a tendency to move and ebb and flow? Again, I don't need to look at the chart. I can just run the algorithm and say, yeah, this is a great candidate. Great. The next trade, the next trade after that, the time after that, it's probably going to be a good trade. It's obviously no guarantee of future performance, but this gives me confidence that I've got the right stock, the right strategy. I've got the right tools for the right job, essentially. So this is how I can have confidence to say, okay, those that list of you know 50 stocks here on the left, these are my best candidates. They're the best performers over a multi-decade approach. And that gives me confidence to narrow my focus and take that list of you know 150 stocks down to the top 30. Okay, these are the best ones for me to focus on. Great. So these are going to be good for swing traders. Now, bad example, because it doesn't swing. Let's just go and look at AT&T. So at and it's pretty crap. It's not a stock that I'm going to swing trade. It doesn't mean that it's not a good trader because there are pockets of profit. You can see that it has runs over the last 20 years. Again, it has runs of good movement, but it's a net underperformer for swing trading. So it's not a good candidate. So I'm going to exclude that from my trading process. It does mean that I can't put the trade on when the trade sets up, which is how I like to trade. I'd have to have some additional discretionary evaluations that might cause me to get involved with AT and T. Let's. So if you're doing this manually, I'm going to pop it onto the monthlies, 
And one of the things that should stand out is while this does move, again, keep in mind, these are all monthly bars. It has long periods of time, you know, multiple years of sideways, multiple years of sideways. So this is not a great stock. Now, when AT&T launched, I don't know if you remember in the 90s, was it, it was AT&T? It had a growth spurt, obviously, going into uh, new technology, new markets, the uh, mobile phones, booms in uh, the 90s to the early noughties. And then obviously we've got smartphones and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that sort of that sort of um, product reaches saturation. So we do have growth potential. But the reality is, is right now, how much bigger can the the telecoms market get it's saturated so now this is probably a better dividend play so again it all comes down to like what am i trying to do am i a swing trader am i a cash flow trader am i a dividend trader what's the style of trading that would suit me personally or what's the style of trading that would suit you personally again there's no single right answer and i think this is what kind of trips people up with trying to find a strategy that works it, they all work. You know, it's just trying to find the one that's right for you as a trader. Now, I trade multiple strategies. I've got swing trading. I've got income trading. I've got some cash flow trading. I use options very creatively. I've got hedging uh, tactics within all of those things. So I kind of get a little bit of, you know, several uh, opportunities as the days, the weeks, and the months unfold. My primary strategy my bread and butter, for want of a better description, is swing trading. I'm looking for swings in price over multi days, multi weeks, you know, sometimes multiple months. So the point is, is if we're looking at uh, again the weekly charts of AT and T, you can see at a glance, this probably doesn't look like a great stock to swing trade. You've got the the moving averages flip flopping around regularly, and that is indicative that. You know, it's not a good trending stock. You've got multiple crosses in the average price at a relatively similar location. It doesn't perform well from a swing trading viewpoint. This is just the, the weekly chart for the moment. So when we go to back to our stock that we know performs well, we've got a stock that historically trends. It performs well. Apple, for example, is quite innovative. It's a very different performance. You know, maybe this is a good candidate. And again, past performance, no guarantee. But future performance, I've got to say that. I'm obliged to say that. But the reality is I'm only looking for, will it work for the next month? There's a good chance that the next trade over the next 30 to 45 days probably is going to work out as I expect. Again, I'm not looking to hold Apple for years. I'm not looking to hold it for another five years. I am not an investor. I just want to capture the next swing. And that swing could be up or down. I don't care which way it goes. But when you start to go through stocks, again, compared to AT&T, we've got the, the averages. There's long periods of time between the average prices crossing back and forth. That's a good candidate for trend trading. Again, we can use the filter that we normally go through on a regular basis, which is the um, uh, using the average prices to filter. We can also use it to say, should this be in my universe? And again, this is just a very back of the envelope way that I used to do. Is this a good candidate for swing trading? Well, if you look back over that visually, just the last 10 years, that's all. That's the data that you can see on the chart. Here. It's ten years on the weekly chart. Then the crosses in the average price they don't happen with any frequency. Again, all I'm looking out my time horizon for a trade, my average time in trade is, um, and because it amuses me, um, my average time in trade is uh, thirty to forty-five days. That's my historical average. So I'm only looking to get paid at the end of the month, essentially. So there's a good chance that this stock will pay me on the next swing should it set up and meet all the conditions that I make in the next 30 to 45 days. Great. That's why it's in the universe. And if you're doing this manually, you don't need the fancy algorithm and the automation. It certainly helps. It validates. It'll help you finesse and fine tune the uh, the potential uh, stock universe that you could trade. But it suddenly becomes like, well, even visually, I can see 
because of that separation in the moving averages and the fact that it's not crossing. Let's go back to uh, AT and T. Do do do. Let's do that. There we go. Let's go back to AT and T. You can see it's very different. You've got multiple crosses in the average prices. The the average prices, just to preempt the question, are the twenty, the fifty, and the two hundred, uh, and. It, they're flip-flopping back and forth. Back, certainly the, the 20 over the 50, flip-flopping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, multiple times. And this is on the weekly, remember. Um, so it, it's up a week, down a week, up a week, You know, maybe up two, three weeks, down two, three weeks. That's going to be really frustrating to trade. I think I would rather have um, the experience of Apple, where over multiple, but I think Apple's an anomaly. Let's say uh, skip over that. We've got uh, ADS Alliance Data Systems. There's a good chance that you know the next trade's going to be okay. I can't say it for certain, but there's a good chance it's going to give me a better than average odds. Now, when you do have the availability, and you maybe you want to go down the algorithm and coding something up roots then you can validate that, yeah, this is not only a good stock, it's, at, here's the data. Uh, let's throw it up there. Here's the data. This is just looking for the strongest breakout moves. In fact, let me just pop the daily chart back on. There we go. Uh, just looking for the best uh, entries, the best, uh, the best juiciest setups. Again, it it's looking good. It's looking good. You know, you've got uh, net profits, a thousand dollars in, fifteen thousand dollars out without compounding, profitable, forty five percent of the time, long and short. It looks great. It absolutely looks great. There's a little bit of a, a snafu here. I know with money management, I can filter that out because I do. Um, with a hedging uh, strategy and tactic. So I know that I can minimize the losses quite dramatically just by simply moving from stocks to options. It makes that equity curve smoother anyway. But what we're starting to see is it's not essential to have the automations. It just gives me extra confidence. Again, I just want to reinforce, I only had the, the extra stuff the strategy automations to validate that actually this is not just a good strategy because I've been using it for years. I know I'm making money, but it validates the rules. I can fine tune and finesse things, obviously test a few adjustments and ideas, but it also means that I can zero in on actually these are definitively the best stocks to trade. And that's the whole purpose of this um, uh, session today. It's not just to like find a stock and to go hunting through, because again, remember, we don't want to look through 28,000 stocks. It's a waste of time, waste of time. I've done it. We've all done it. How do we just take the, the top 150 stocks and just focus on that? And maybe we can take that list down to two to three stocks that make the most sense this week. And even if you were to look and visually inspect those 150 and do that once a week, you don't need to look at every stock every day, all of the time. But even if you did, you're looking at the best 150 because they've got the most volume, they've got options. Maybe there's a, 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 some extra elements. Maybe you want to layer on some fundamentals, uh, however you want to do that, but you've got the best candidates. Again, just reinforcing, that means that I'm never stuck for something to look at. Not necessarily trade, but something to look at. So let's go and look at the chart. So we're going to stick with my top 30, and I'm looking for stocks. So now that we've got the mechanical scan, that creates the universe over here on the left. I've got my top 30 stocks. I'm just going to stick with the top 30, which is what these are here. Um, top 30, uh, is it 30? Uh, do, 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 yes, top 27, <laughs> 26 stocks. It's almost 30, it's not quite. But now we've got that best list of stocks. Again, take a screenshot, they're yours. Have them with my, uh, with my love. You know, you, you've done all the hard work. These are quite literally what I lovingly refer to as the super duper ding dongs. Um, these are the best stocks for swing trading that produce the best results with the highest returns, the most consistent, smoothest equity curve, all those things that I've been uh, showing you, it's not guesswork. Again, no guarantee that the next trade is going to be good, but at least I've got a positive expectancy strategy. I've got the right stocks, the right strategy that have a tendency to swing. So that when I do go to look at the stocks, again, we're on Apple, I can now start to say, well, 
I don't need to think about, is this the right stock? All I need to do is say, is it doing one of my six money-making blueprints? Is it going up? Is it going down? Or is it going sideways? Because when I know that it's one of these three blueprints, then I can start to overlay like how I can trade. So now that we're looking at Apple, is it number one, number two, or number three? Well, it looks like it's pointing upwards, but I'd say it's number three. It's oscillating. It's contained within an, a defined upper boundary and a defined lower boundary. So we can call this a range. So now that I know that, I can be a buyer at range lows, a seller at range highs. I can buy, oops, bear with me. I can buy the break of range highs, or I can sell the break of range lows. Do, 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 do. So there's two thing, there's four things that we can do. I can be bullish at the lows, bullish on the breakouts. I can be bearish at the range high or bearish on the breakouts. So where is price right now? Well, it's in the range. Great. Ideally, I'd like the price to be at the range low or at the range high. As it's somewhere in the middle, again, I've readjusted for the eagle-eyed amongst you. I previously had a horizontal range with there about $145. So this trade here that you can see highlighted, previously I evaluated this as a breakout. It met my classic trending setup. Um, I've managed to trade. I've made money. I've de-risked the trade. It's not costing me anything at this stage. But looking for a brand new trade right now, it's not the best location because it's not in context. I'm looking for price because price is in a range. I'm looking for price to be at the range low or above the range high for a bullish trade. So that makes sense. Let me just pause there. So we've got the right stocks. You know how to create your universe. I'm showing you how I create mine. Now I've got that. I can go and look for the visual inspection. Visual inspection, we've gone from the mechanical scan uh, to create the universe. We're now doing the visual inspection. And all I'm doing is like, is this meeting one of these three? Uh, it's uh, three directions, but it's six blueprints. Six money-making blueprints. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. I don't care whether you're an expert in Dow 3, Gan 3, Elliott Wave Theory. I don't care if you see a fractal pattern, a butterfly, a Gartley. I can recognize them all and I can out-pattern anyone. I spent the first 12 years looking for patterns. I'm pretty good at it. And the thing that I know 28 years later is it doesn't fucking matter. I, I don't care about the name anymore. It really doesn't. Does it meet market structure? Trend, uptrend, downtrend range. Great. That's the money flow. That's the, the footprints of the institutional traders that says this is money. And uh, so someone's just asking about um, counter trend. Yeah, counter trend is possible. You still need to know what the trend is. I don't like trading counter trend. It's not that I don't. It's just that I rarely do. I prefer to go with the money flow. But still, if you're going to trade counter trend, you need to know what the trend is. It's going to be number one or number two. Number one or number two. Is it in an uptrend? Great. You can sell the rally in an uptrend if you want to and trade counter trend. So there's eight possible ways that you can trade. I trade six of them. And the only reason why I don't trade counter trend is I don't like doing it. I would rather go with the money flow. The trend is your friend. Another way of saying that is money flow. Another way of saying is institutional traders. Very, you know, I, I would rather trade with the money. Great. That's what we're looking for. So that's the blueprints. So now we've got that. I think everyone's happy. Someone's saying, move on. We get it. Great. Is it going up, down, or sideways? It's going up by the dip. It, nah, it's suddenly trading's easy. What's it doing? Is it going up, down, or sideways? One, two, or three? It's doing number one by the dip. Great. Next one. What's it doing? It's going up, down, or sideways? It's doing number three. It's in a range. Great. Mark off the range. Uh, I'm not going to do that for the moment. Um, mark off the range. Is it uh, in the uh, higher the range, the lower the range, or in the middle? It, eyeballing it, it looks like it's in the middle. Let's leave it alone. It's not at a good location. And this, because we know what we're looking for, I can zero in on the best opportunities very, very quickly. This always takes longer to explain than to actually do. 
CLF, what's it doing? Buy the dip. Well, here's the dip. It's been bought. You can see the trades that I've marked off with some of my insiders. Domino's Pizza had an appalling earnings. It doesn't fucking matter about earnings. We've back tested the shit out of this stock. It's an amazing stock to trade. It's wonderful for swing trading. Guess what? It's doing number one. The money doesn't care about the earnings blip. Buy the dip. It's not an immediate buy. I'm still waiting for my entries, my exits, my stops and targets, the trade craft elements. But it's not that I'm not going to place the trade. I'm just need to think about when I'm going to place it. But this is a perfect candidate. It's number one. Great. Buy the dip. Halliburton. It's a little bit sloppy, a little bit messy. It's evolved from one to another. Again, I, one of the things that we need to worry about. But nonetheless, number three, range low to the range high. Bam. We're at the range high. We're waiting for a new entry setup. HFC, a little bit of a hybrid. It's not obvious, I don't think, with the left part of the charts trending, the right part of the charts ranging. I can't really see a well-defined range on HFC. Clear upper boundary, clear lower boundary. It would fall into number three, but I'm just thinking about the way I'm describing it. It is in a range, but I can't quite figure out where the highs and the lows are. It's not well-defined. Guess what we're going to do? Let's move on. Hershey's placed a trade on this yesterday. What is it doing? It's number one. Great. Buy the dip. Easy peasy. INSG. Oh, sell the rally. Perfect. It's a little bit of my drawing scribbles all over. Jeff, we commented on this a few, well, several weeks ago now. You can see the rain. We've got trend, short term range. We've got the breakouts. It's buy the dip. It's currently rallying in an uptrend. I've just closed the trade. Um, past Friday, I think we commented on it last week, actually. But number one, it is in a trend, rallying, wait for the dip. I'm waiting for it to come back between the move and averages. Great. So it's not no, it's not today. I've got to clear what I'm waiting for. I'm not chasing the move. I'm waiting for the dip in the context of a very clear trend. And then suddenly, because we've got structure, because we've got a production line, it becomes easier to recognize what we should be trading and when we should be trading. Pop a comment in the chat box, folks. Is this helping? Now that we've got through the, the universe, we've got the right stocks, we've LNG energy, it is trending. It's a statement. There's no ambiguity over, should I trade this stock? I'm going to trade it. It's trending. Wait for the dip. It's rallying in an uptrend. I'm going to wait for the retracements. At Logitech, again, with tr prices transitioning from uptrend to downtrend. Sell the rally. Number two, sell the rally. It's just ooh, not quite, almost tickles the, uh, the 20 period moving average. Benefits of hindsight, of course, I would have shorted the shit out of this one. Um, I, I like to see price touch the averages uh, to give the trigger bars. Um, it needs to be in trend for at least 40 days to be met. I still need to see a significant enough rally. If there's going to be a long-term sustainable trend, don't worry about missing the first push. You're always going to get plenty of opportunities. As you can see on the way up, you've got multiple rallies, retracements, rallies, retracements. You'll see that on the way down if there's going to be a long-term trend. So don't worry about missing the move. You will never miss the move. You'll just get the next bit. Just get the next bit. Don't chase it. Wait for the market to come to you. At MAC, the return of the MAC, it's in a range, short-term range. I'm going to ignore that. Um, earlier this year, it got caught up in some of the meme nonsense, but it's in a range. Great. Number three, I don't think this range is big enough to trade. So guess what? I'm going to wait for the breakout. Breakout through the high, breakout through the low. Easy. Uh, it's not no, it's just not today. Marriott Hotel trending deep retracements because it took forever. That's the reason why I'm quantifying it that. You can see my trade. I preemptively got in a little bit earlier than uh, what would have been ideal. We only know that with hindsight. But why did I take my entry there? Well, it was a downward sloping channel in the context of an uptrend. I saw this as a flag. I had some extra information. So I took my reversal off the descending channel, the range low, same pattern. I'm just putting a name on it. The range low, it's angles. So that's what dictated my entry here. Benefits of hindsight, it went sideways for a month and a half, two months. I only know that with hindsight. 
I've got to place the trade at the time based on the information that I see. Again, of course, with hindsight, I would have waited two months. It rallied. It's gone up to the recent highs. That's always our first objective. And maybe you can see why I've waited. Sorry, I, I've taken my exit at that point. I've got what I wanted. It just took a little bit longer than I expected. So now we can say this is broken out. We can go over to number one. Number one, it is now trending. Great. Buy the dip. I'm going to look for it to come back into the moving averages. It's not no. It's just not today. I've just closed the trade. I'm not anxious to get back in it. I'm going to wait for my points. My Bible dip is when price is trending, number one, and I'm going to buy into the moving averages. So as price comes back to between the moving averages, that's going to be my Bible dip. MT, it's in a range. Number three, buy range lows, sell the break of range lows, sell the range highs, buy the break of range highs. So I've got four things I can do. It's in a range. Where is it right now? Where has it been? You can see my markings. I've already placed trades. It's at the range low, bullish at the range low. When you've got structure, when you've got a process, when you've got just you know, in this case, six simple blueprints of what we're looking for, it makes it easier to go and find it. All I'm trying to do is evaluate which of my six blueprints is this chart doing? Is it unfolding? Where is it on that blueprint? NVIDIA, we've had a range. We've commented it on the breakout at the time many, many months ago. For any of our long-term viewers, you'll know that. We've got the breakout. You can see one trade, two trade, buy the dip, buy the dip, one, two, three. Over here, when it was in a range, breakouts. But now it's trending by the, it's going from below the 50, back above the 50. And you can see my most recent trade marked off there. So this is number one. It's a buyable dip in an uptrend. OSK, trending Descent, almost like Marriott's, uh, where it's got this descending channel. The average prices have crossed over. We've got potentially a new bearish direction. So it's number two, average prices, mechanical trend is down. It's only recent. I want to see 40 days in trend. It's not done it yet. But if I'm going to do something, it's going to be number two, sell the rally. But I need my other strategy conditions to get me into a bearish trade. Starbucks. Guess what? Trend, new range. It's at the range low. Number three, I've got to be a buyer at the range low. Guess what I'm going to do later today or maybe Monday? It's at the range low. I've got to be bullish at the range low. I've got to presume that history will repeat itself. I'm only looking for six things. History repeating itself. Until something new happens, the same thing is likely. I can't say for certain. No one can say for certain. Let go of certainty. <laughs> it's going to create more frustration than you can possibly imagine. But it's at the range low. Great. I've got to be bullish. Where's it going? It's going to go to the range high. Why? Because that's what it's been doing. History should repeat itself. And if it's trending, we're going to look for something similar to happen. But nonetheless, it's at the range low, target the range high. It's going to go from the low to that. And if it doesn't, if it breaks down, then guess what? I can change my viewpoint with new information and trade the break out of the range low. It's not there yet. Don't need to worry about it. But I can plan for these things. Here's an example of one that it's turning around. So we've got bullish at the range low. It's broken out. I've applied some corrective trade management. It's now back in the range. So example of a false breakout. Occasionally this happens. But with that said, it's back inside a known range. So I've got to be a buyer at the range lows. I've already got a trade on. I'm looking for it to go up to the range high. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. And if you're not sure, leave it alone. SPGI, this is the global index. It's an ETF. It's just like the S&P, only it's based on global stocks. Da -da, trend, number one, buy the dip. It's just fired off. We're back above the 50-period move on average. The global markets are back in bullish mode. Four more, folks, and then we've gone through the top 30. As you can see, it doesn't take long to go through 30 stocks. If you're spending two hours doing this and you're doing it manually as opposed to doing the, uh, the scan, again, I appreciate not everyone's got the fancy software. I have. Not everyone does. Not everyone wants them. 
SQM, what would you say? It's in a number three. It's in a range, isn't it? In a range. It's not well-defined, but it's clearly going sideways. Multiple crosses of those average prices that we commented on. You know what? It's not obvious. It's not clear. Let's leave it alone. Leave it alone. STKL. Uh, bearish trend. Average prices are crossed over. We've got to be mechanically bearish. Sell the rally in a downtrend. We've commented on that last week and the last few weeks. Multiple rallies and retracements off the 20 period moving average. Very good uh, indeed. Uh, SWIR Sierra Wireless. Well, it's a little bit messy, but here's how I see it rising channel, rising channel. Wasn't obvious uh, a few weeks ago, but nonetheless, we've got a rising channel. So I'm going to call it number three. Um, I'm going to default to calling it a range, but at the range level, we've got a very small consolidation in the larger rising channel. It's still a consolidation inside a consolidation, essentially. So because I don't think this uh, range is tradable, there's only a, a one or two dollars in it. Uh, I'm going to wait for the breakouts, wait for the breakouts of the smaller range where the cursor is. And I can use that to get positioned on a range reversal, the rising channel. And I can use one pattern to get positioned on the other pattern. VLO, it's a little bit sloppy, a little bit messy with hindsight again, but we do have a very clearly defined range. I think we've got range high, range low. I've not previously marked it off. So there we go. Multiple touches of the highs, multiple touches of the lows. Um, not really doing anything on this right now. Again, I've already got some exposure to the energy sector uh, in other areas. I've got three or four energy stocks, so I'm just not wanting to duplicate the trades. Uh, it's the only reason why I've not got anything current on it. Uh, but nonetheless, we've got price in a range. What are we going to do? We're going to wait for price to be at the upper or the lower boundary, um, and you can trade the reversal or trade the uh, breakouts. At WCC, guess what? Number three, it's in a range, rising channel, rising channel. Uh, we've got price moving up to the channel high. So what am I going to do here? I probably, because it's angled, I wouldn't take the reversal off the channel high simply because it's pointing upwards. You've still got that bullish bias. So I would rather be a buyer at the channel low or a buyer on the breakout of the channel high. There we go. Uh, last one, X, X going to give it to you. It's a little bit of a mess. It's very clearly range bounds, very sloppy, very messy. Uh, but guess what? We're at the range low, at the range low. Now, you can see some of my past trades. They've not worked out. I've managed them as best I can. Um, but with the benefit of hindsight, with the benefit of hindsight, we can now say we are officially in a consolidation. We're at the range low. And this looks like a good location. So I've got to be bullish at the range low and target the range high. It's number three. Cool. That's it. 30 stocks reviewed what to trade, when to trade, how to find what to trade. And we've got several candidates that look good, that look good. So what looks, if I could just choose one, if I could just choose one, I'm drawn back to Starbucks. I'm drawn back to Starbucks because I like Starbucks. I don't like their coffee. It's awful. Uh, but as a trader, it's one of my favorites. Um, but just based on what I'm seeing right now, I'm drawn back to Starbucks. I'm also drawn back to SPGI. Uh, this has got a lovely buy the dip. Um, it's got today trade written all over it for me. It's um, met my uh, conditional triggers. So there are two things that I'd be looking to do something on Really soon. I suppose if it was to pick a third again in order, uh, X uh, US steel looks good at the range low, target the range high. So it is uh, looking good. So there are my three cho choices. If I was going to just choose, um, again, it's not quite if I pick one, but nonetheless, we've got three out of 30 that I could do something on today. And again, if you're doing this manually, manually being what I've just been through, it shouldn't take you long. Bear in mind that I was firstly explaining what I was doing, what I was about to do so that you understand the process. The actual act of going through 30 stocks plus talking through them, it took, again, just looking at the clock, 22 minutes. It should not take you longer than 22 minutes. And appreciate, you know, like with anything, you've got to learn a process. You've got to become familiar with it. So I am a product of my own system. But if you just have that, the, these three, number one, number two, and three, is it number one, number two, or number three? Great. It's number three. Great. Where is price in the range? It's at the range low. Great. I've got to be bullish off the range low. 
Um, secondary, I'll be waiting for a breakout. That's what we're going to call something new. So the whole philosophy is just based around looking for six patterns within the three market structure trends. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? Or is it in a range? And if it's in a range, there's four things, four ways that we can trade it. But ultimately, buy the dip, sell the rally, buy range lows, sell range highs, buy the break of range highs, sell the break of range lows. There's the six things that I'm going to do. We've got the right stocks to look for those things on because it's swing trading. We've validated using uh, visual inspection, which is what I did for many, many years. More recently, uh, automated algorithms. So these are the best stocks for, for swing trading as far as I want to trade. This is what I want for my trading. Um, and again, despite the fact that we've gone through the, the top 30 manually, it's 25 minutes, two or three times a week. I'm sure that's going to help you not be flapping around trying to filter out the something from the 28,000 stocks that are out there. Again, thousands of them are just not worth looking at. Just look at the best stocks, the best candidates, the most liquid um, stocks that have tendencies that you want in a stock that swing, for example, or maybe you're looking for an at and that doesn't move on a regular or historical basis for the last 30 years. It's virtually unchanged in the last 30 years, uh, certainly the last 25 years. And maybe that's what you want from a dividend stock that you want to cash flow and you want to collect uh, income and be even more passive than I am. But nonetheless, that's what we're looking for. Absolutely, Randall. Yeah, it, as uh, just picking up on your comments. Yeah, it's it should be no big deal to scan through, and it becomes manageable when you've got a tight list of ideal stocks, just like we've got here. The best stocks for what we're doing. The best stocks for what we're doing, and then we're just looking for the structure. You know, is it today? All I'm trying to find out is: is it today? Like Starbucks, for example, is it today? Yeah, it's looking like it's today. Great. We're at the range low. I've got a few extra conditional triggers, which we don't have time to go through today, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, but nonetheless, it's looking like it's a day trade. I've got to be bullish at the range low, because otherwise, what's the point of us looking at the charts? <laughs> we might as well just do what everyone else does and toss a coin. Right. I think that was a, I felt like that was a good session, folks. Let me know if it did. Let me know if it landed. So, uh, help me out here. Help me out. What was your biggest takeaway? Uh, oh, James, thank you very much for your kind words. Mega session, as always. Thank you very much. What was your big takeaway today? Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Randall. Thank you very much for your kind words. So what was your biggest takeaway? If you're new to the session, don't be shy. Don't make me name you. <laughs> For, oh, Wallace, great. First time here. First time here. It's like this every week. You can see the uh, the past recordings. Thank you very much. What was your takeaway? Uh, Wallace, great chance. Again, I want, again I, I want this for me first. I do want it for me first. And it sounds crass to say it that way, but it is true. It is true. I want to make trading easy for me. Um, and... It, it is literally selfish because I want to make it easy. I, like, as I started to uh, outline at the beginning of the session, just while everyone's typing their uh, comments, and again, thank you, I can see them all through there. Um, I hated the not knowing what I was going to do. I want to know exactly these days what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. I want to know with absolute certainty that this is the trade that I should be in because my early trades – that first trade, I had sleepless nights. Eight months, I had, I had sweaty palms. I had anxiety. Um, I would come home from college and I would phone the broker at, at um, 3.30 in the afternoon. I would get an update of the price. And then I would chat to the broker um, because it was phone brokers back then. And maybe I'm dating myself. There was no online thing. I would phone up and get a price. Um, and it was just eight months of misery, absolute misery. And I hated it. I thought, how can I not do that again? <laughs> Phone broke is absolutely wrong. So it, it, that's that. Uh, those early experiences, they set me off on that journey. 
And that's why I keep going back to, I want to know with clarity, this is exactly what I should be trying. And even when I went full time back in uh, 2000, 2001, I started very fortunate to start trading online. Like I hated that uncertainty. Like I hate, because every time I look at the charts, because I had this, uh, I refer to it as the curse of knowledge, because I knew the Dow through the Gantt with the yellow wave through it. I knew 34 different name patterns, plus all the exotic ones, the, the fractal bullshits. I, I know a lot of, I know a lot of ways of trading. Like, which one do I use? Because many of them are in conflict with each other. So it is always like, what's the trend? What's the money flow? The trend is your friend. And that having that fallback started to, like, which way is the money flow is how we phrase it today. But always trying to figure out, okay, what's going to give me the best chances of seeing consistency? I need rules. I need a methodical approach to find, filter, and sort stocks. You've got it laid out for you, literally here today. You should never have an issue of what shall I trade. You should never be stuck in trading. Um, but the, it's those early experiences that maybe illustrates how I approach because I wanted to remove all of the the uncertainty from my own trading. And um, the sub story version is I've got Crohn's disease. I, I, I'm not well frequently. I have permanent mild symptoms because my intestines are absolutely buggered. Um, but I have permanent mild symptoms. One of those is tiredness. So when I'm not well, I want to be able to follow a process and not worry about, did I press the right button, the wrong button? Should I be in a trade? I don't want that because I still, because trading is my primary gig. You know, I, I, I love doing it, but it, it just, it's dicta- how I approach it is dictated by, I don't want to spend three hours today flicking through chart after chart after chart doing that stock market equivalent of where's Wally. I do have a, a picture of Wally somewhere. Where's my Wally? Where's Waldo? There we go. Uh, no more zombie trading. <laughs> doing the stock market equivalent of where's Wally. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, so uh, lots of uh, good takeaways. Thank you for your kind words again. Whilst, uh, hopefully you're going to come back again next week. We do it every week. We've been doing it for uh, many, many months. I thoroughly love trying to give back to the, uh, the trading community. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I fully and wholeheartedly appreciate the time that you've uh, spent with me. I, I get that we could all be doing other things. Uh, so I'm always honored and privileged that, you know, so many people have spent their time uh, with us today, here today. So thank, thank you very much. I um, just want to acknowledge that. If you've got any value from today's session, all that I would ask you to do is that you share the replay with two people who need to see it. Let's spread the word. Let's create uh, an army of production line traders who can profit from the markets uh, without the sacrifice of many hours of zombie trading. Uh, the one thing that I would ask everyone to do that if if we don't speak again is that you just take action. You put into action what you've learned. And as I promised you right at the beginning, if you want some extra help, again, it's, I don't do the weird arm twisting thing. You are invited to work with me. If you want the extra step, if you want to know the, the finer points of how you can accelerate your own uh, trading growth, Many people that I've worked with have spent, you know, five, 10, some even over 20 years trying to figure it out on their own. I've been very fortunate. I managed to figure it out very early on, very quickly. Um, But if you want to speed up your learning curve so that you don't have to spend the next 10, 15, 20 years trying it, figure it out on your own, you're invited to work with me. Very simply, just go to my uh, website. Uh, I have a group accelerated program. I have one-on-one mentorship. I don't have any space for that at the moment, but if you want to go on the waiting list, let me know. You can go to productionlinetraining.com. It's nice and memorable. That will redirect you to my website, which is antivesta.com. But nonetheless, you are invited. Uh, the best way to learn how a portfolio is managed is by seeing a portfolio being managed. Uh, essentially, I hop on uh, twice a week with my uh, group of insiders and I get to go through the specifics, the, ent- the entries, the exits, the stop to targets. I get to ask questions, help you with your portfolio and help you along your journey so that you can become uh, successful so that you can see your own measure of success. So I'm looking for two or three students to help uh, to come along to these group sessions. Um, who are motivated to get results. So that is my shameless invitation. Uh, the group accelerator is probably the best thing that I've done in years. Um, it's the fastest way to get the results that you're looking for uh, with production line trading. So next steps, if you are invite, uh, interested, 
uh, or uh, sorry, if you are, uh, I can't put, put your teeth in, Phil. Can't speak today. You are invited, should you want to, go to productionlinetraining.com uh, and you'll be taken to uh, the homepage. Let me just pop it in the chat box. Do, do, do. Antivesta.com. Yeah, just go to uh, antivesta.com. Uh, you'll be asked to pop some details in. You'll be taken to an information page and there'll be some extra details. And if you do want to talk um, and chat around how this would impact you specifically, I can stay around for the next five to 10 minutes um, and we can have a little chat. We can hop on a, a private call if you want to. You can physically uh, talk to me and uh, we'll basically help you see if it's right for you. If it is right for you, we'll have a long conversation. And if it's not right for you, that's cool as well. I'll always point you off in the right direction. And with that said, I think that's it. End scene, fade to black. That was, are you stuck selecting stocks? Well, I think the answer is no. No, right now, no. You are not ever going to be stuck with what to trade because <laughs> we've, we've fixed it. <laughs> awesome, Randall. Thank you very much for your kind words, Randall. Uh, and I'll speak to you later today. Right, I'm going to sign off. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you all at the same time, the same place next week. Okay, so the recording has, oops, the recording has stopped.